year was 1907. Bombay slept as night crept on. In a house, in the bylanes of this great metropolis, a young woman tossed and turned restlessly in bed. And just as dawn was breaking through, a gentle hand reached out to soothe a tender brow, and a voice seemed to beckon her from the realms of deep sleep. Hama? Hama! Mama, what is it? Why are you so sad? My dream, my unfulfilled dream, cried the apparition before vanishing into the night. The young lady woke up from her dream, and there and then, at the crack of dawn, she made up her mind. No more would her beloved mother be sad. She, her daughter, Hamabai Framji Pitit, would fulfill her mother Ababai's cherished dream. And a tryst was made with destiny. North of Bombay is the elite area of Bandra, the home of the stars and the who's who of society. Cocooned amidst the seaside sweep of Carter Road and the Sylvan Pali Hills, stands an edifice, majestic, regal and proud. The Bai Ababai Framji Pitit Girls High School. A tribute of her daughter's love for her mother. A testimony of the fulfillment of her mother's unfinished dream. Ababai Pitit was the daughter of Sir Nasarvanji Pitit, the founder of the Puna Boys Orphanage, which had made its humble beginning in Lalbagh. It became her dream to establish a similar institution for Parsi girls. But man proposes and God disposes. Before her dream could see fruition, Ababai left for her heavenly abode on the 14th of October 1907. But so strong must have been her desire for a girls' school that it transcended itself into her daughter Hamabai's very soul. With generosity characteristic of the Pettit family, Hamabai set aside her personal jewelry for this laudable purpose. This remarkable daughter sold 199 pieces of the most exquisite jewellery and 530 rupees of loose precious stones. It fetched a handsome sum of rupees 12 lakh. With nary a thought, Hamabai gave away all. From the sale proceeds of her rightful inheritance, she purchased and erected the school building replete with furniture, fixtures and fittings. A deed of settlement, the trust deed, was drawn on 2nd April 1909. She decreed in her trust deed that the principal and primary object of the said institution shall be to provide for the bringing up, maintenance and education of Parsi orphan girls or fatherless or motherless Parsi girls being in destitute or helpless circumstances and professing the Zoroastrian religion. On the 13th of March 1913 was founded the Bai Avabai Framji Pitted Girls Orphanage, a living testimony of her daughter's unshakable tenacity to fulfill her mother's unfulfilled dream. The girls' orphanage at last saw the light of day. Starting with 40 boarders, today the school has a thousand students, out of which 100 are boarders. From the very beginning, great care was expended towards the holistic development of the girl child. Special emphasis was paid on needlework, dressmaking, house cleaning, music, dairy work, painting, gardening, first aid and nursing. Little wonder that every child who has left the portals of this great academic institute has found for herself a place in this world. Ababai's dream of an independent adult, ready to take on the challenge of life, has been amply fulfilled. 
Destiny may have denied parents to some children, but over years and time, Bai Aba Bai Pitit School has proved mother and father the scores of these little ones. Let none ever forget that. Time and tide waits for no one. The orphanage continued to grow from strength to strength. Donations began to pour in from the community at large. From the monies donated by Zoroastrian families in loving memory of their dearly departed, cottages were added to the school. Barucha, Kama, Barda, Tata, Judge and Bamji were some of the cottages that were named after the donors' families. Dormitories occupied the top floors of each cottage and classrooms the ground level. In those days, girls walked through the densely forested area to study and appear for their matriculate examinations at St. Joseph's School of Hill Road and then walk back the same route every evening. Lunch was sent caringly, daily, from the school kitchen. Who says they were orphans? Everything a doting mother would do for her child, the Ava by Pettit Orphanage did for their wards, and with an abundance of love, compassion and dedication. In 1962, the orphanage became a high school with Mrs. Mani N. Bharucha as its first principal. Thence, there was no turning back. With its ever-increasing popularity and demand for good education, the school threw open its doors to other communities as day scholars. The borders continue to be Zoroastrians only to this very date. In the wake of Mani Bharucha, women of intelligence, compassion and above all, dedication followed as principals. Mrs. Roshan Khariwala, Mrs. Shobha Deem, Mrs. Roda Doctor, Mrs. Hutokshi Driver, and the present Mrs. Sandhya Balakrishnan. For 100 years, the fulcrum on which this glorious institution has revolved are the five Ds. Dedication, discipline, determination, devotion, and diligence. Virtues destined to enhance the physical growth and moral fiber of a child. Salute to the institution. Salute to the trustees. Salute to every principal, teacher, matron, and helper staff of this great institution. Hamabai Framji Pitit. We live in the heart of every Pititite, as also in the heart of every Zoroastrian. Proficient in disciplines of sports, rarely attributed to women in those days, Hamabai's forte was horse riding, racing, and hunting. Yet, at heart, this very sporty, outgoing personality was deeply religious, Zoroastrian in every sense of the word. The pitted Fasli Agyari at New Marine Lines stands proof of the same. And the only Atash Biram which stands even today in Iran was built out of the munificence of the Pitits. In the annals of Zoroastrian history, this dynamic family has carved for itself an undeniable niche casting indelible footprints on the sands of time. In these hundred years, thousands of tiny faltering steps have entered its portals, and thousands of poised, assured young ladies have stepped out with pride and gratitude. For a hundred years, the school has stood like a sentinel, each year adding to its glory. There it stands even today, lulled by the soothing sea, surrounded by serene foliage, a tower in the face of all adversities. As each young lady bids a final tearful adieu to her alma mater, it calls out reassuringly. Go, my child. You are now ready to take on the world. Shake off those tears and smile as you walk away. As you cast your last glance at me, remember, students will come 
and students will go but i your alma mater will go on forever